it was the thing that made me able to retire at 35. If I started my life in the rat race and the hamster wheel rolling and rolling and rolling, I would end up like everyone retiring at 65. Retiring for me is not not working anymore, is not having to work anymore. Whenever I input this amount in any retirement calculator, it says, dude, you're okay, you're free. But in four years, even the worst predictions are telling us we're going to be somewhere around 500k. If you don't have, you know, like volatility to the downside, you won't have it to the upside. You can retire even if Bitcoin is at 60k, 100k or half a million. The first thing I did when when I started this plan was I need to be with no debt. I need to have no mortgage. In fact, I sold my house for Bitcoin in 2020. I'm fine not having a house. It was one of the best decisions I've ever made. I moved from the city to the middle of the mountains and the lakes. I'm having much more contact with nature. I'm eating healthier. My life changed from being what I have to do to what I want to do. I'm amazed how low the Google trends and all those those metrics are right now. Like it, we we are not we are not that far away from an all time high, uh, and there's so much happening. Uh, but it seems like the retail. Uh, folks and also i don't get any calls like it's it's fascinating it's really calm i feel like well maybe i think it's for us at least that we're in the space for a couple of years right now uh it's a good sign you know like uh i entered bitcoin just before 2021 and sorry i discovered bitcoin uh yeah and the last months of 2020 um and I remember by that time, everyone was you know, like, you know, very hyped about Bitcoin, Bitcoin's price mainly. And I didn't get to see, you know, like the from nowhere to somewhere. I already arrived in the middle of the hype. So uh, everything right now, it's like, uh, even if it's like been like four years in the space, it's like, you know everything's new because I, I this was my first bear market. It's going. This is my first pre bull market. So, uh, and I think lots of us are somewhere in the same, you know, moment of our Bitcoin cycles. So, I'm really sure they will get trendy again. Uh, we we need to remember also that um, by that time, uh, mainly in the last cycle. Uh, people were at home, bored, not working all day, you know, like watching Netflix and Googling and watching YouTube videos. So I think that's, you know, maybe an explanation of why we're a bit lower in Google trends, but still, you know, like more money than ever is coming in the space. So Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's, I think this institutional wave is, is now coming like the, the really the the company money is coming. But today I want to really first off start with you about the topic uh, about retiring. And you told me that you set the goal when you were 20 years old to retire with 35. Uh, and you also achieved that. And uh, Bitcoin kind of helped you with that. Uh, is that right? Yeah, I mean, help me would be being a bit <laughs> uh, underestimating. It was the thing that made me able to retire at 35. Um, I've always been a person who had very clear goals. You know, I wanted something. I, you know, like fight for that something, even if it took me years and years. And I mean, since I finished high school, when I was starting my uh, university career, I started to understand the problem not yet the solution because the solution was you know like a newborn yet so nobody was talking about it i had no idea i didn't actually understand how money work by that time so it was really hard for me to you know like get on this train earlier but i knew that the only way i could uh achieve what i wanted it's uh was you know, if I could get like 100% of my time at my disposal. And I understood that if I, 
you know, started my life in the rat race and the hamster wheel rolling and rolling and rolling, uh, I would, you know, like end up like everyone uh, retiring at 65 or I don't know, 70. And I knew that, that uh, by that time, my body and my mental health wouldn't be near as close as, you know, like what I need them to be in order to enjoy life. Uh, so, I mean, it's not a, that I'm a lazy person. In fact, I'm a very hardworking person. I, but I knew that I wanted to work on what I wanted and spend my, spend my time on, on what I wanted. And even if I knew I, I, I wouldn't, I would be, you know, like quite well, even if I, uh, you know, need money every month income every month uh, to keep my standard of living. I wanted to be free from that, you know? I wanted to... I only knew about money that the only problem that money solves is stop thinking about money, you know? I never wanted, you know, like uh, big private flights and my yachts and, you know, like big mansions. I only wanted to be free, you know? so. As you can guess, when I discovered big Bitcoin, you know, like my mind was completely blown out. Even if I didn't fully understand it at first, it took me like two or three long years reading every book available, watching every podcast, every YouTube video, reading, uh, you know, like uh, Mises, reading Hayek, reading, you know, Friedman and all those uh Austrian <laughs> uh, economic guys who really understood and thought with logic, you know, I, I I could never understood why the world was running the way it was, you know, like uh, math tells us one plus one is two and the world was telling us it's three or it can be whatever we want, you know, so I never could uh, live that way. So I went through the process of understanding uh, and even if I didn't study economics or finance, uh, I'm from the art branch, uh, I'm a musician, but I knew that I was used to some kind of living standard. I didn't want to get below that. I didn't want to, uh, you know, being on the 25th of the month and I, I don't know, uh, not knowing if I'm going to uh, be able to pay my, pay my rent, to buy my groceries, to afford my medical bills. So I thought, okay, there has to be something uh, that set me free from all this. And luckily for me, uh, a few years later, I, I got introduced to Bitcoin. Um, and well, once I understood it, there's no way I could unsee, you know, what I have seen. And after that, all my life has been, you know, uh, used for accumulating as much Bitcoin as I could, uh, work as hard as ever, even if my body uh, wasn't le letting me do it as hard as I did. Um, I mean, just as a background check, I studied music I, uh, I have a degree on classical music composer. Uh, but after that, I, uh, I always, always had, you know, like good skills with, uh, woodworking and all that stuff. And I have a few tools in my house and I started building guitars. And after, I think maybe one or two years after making my first guitar without even noticing it was my full-time job. So I had to stop playing in gigs and had to stop giving concerts and recording with my bands and producing my studio. And I had to end up all day and all night building guitars for uh, all over the world, luckily. So once I understood Bitcoin, uh, I mean, every single penny that came to me went to stacking more sats, you know? Uh, really cool. I, I love a lot that you're building um uh, guitars, uh, yourself is a, a really cool thing, but first I want to also, um, get into like, how did Bitcoin actually, 
uh, retire you or help you retire that? Like, how was that process of, of Bitcoin? Was it just the price appreciation uh, of Bitcoin or was it more than that? Well, I mean, once I understood what Bitcoin was, I started making my math, you know, like I said, I want to be free by 35. Uh, and by free, I mean, retiring for me is not not working anymore is not having to work anymore, uh, which I finally achieved this year. Um, so, I mean, I started like anyone, you know, like uh, I bought my first few sets and after that I set my goals to a few more and then a few more. And I always thought, okay, as everyone does, you know, like if Bitcoin gets, gets to this price, I will be able to Unfortunately, we still keep, you know, like translating that amount of Bitcoin in US dollars just to have a reference because, I mean, the the world didn't wake up yet that we have a, a new standard and a new unmovable, unmolestable thing. Um, so in the, I think it was like two years ago, I've been like two years stacking. And I have reached a goal that, I mean, almost no one around me or no one I knew uh, was even close, you know. But it wasn't enough for me, so I put a goal and I said, you know, like, uh, I'm going to work two years. And uh, in two years more, I'm going to quit wherever I am on my stacking goals. But I have to, you know, like make the biggest effort in my life, even if my, you know, if my back was hurting and my neck was hurting and I was really stressed out because I had a, you know, like very, very stressful job. Uh, I made, made that last effort and I reached a goal uh, where I said, okay, whenever I input, you know, this amount in any retirement calculator in the world, it says, dude, you're okay. You're free. I didn't want it to believe it at first because, you know, when when you get that kind of inf information, um, you know, mainly in, in the sh very short frame time frame, uh, at first you don't believe it, you know. You think, like, there must be something wrong. I mean, I can't retire at 35. There's something I'm missing. There's some, some input in my Excel sheet where I the wrong number and well no it didn't <laughs> so i mean i don't know the future i can't predict any price in the future i know that uh you know even if we stay at this price for four years uh i will be okay so and what people tend to misunderstand when, when they're trying to, you know, calculate the retirement age with Bitcoin is they say, for example, uh, you need, let's say $1 million to retire. Okay. So today I need around 14, 15 Bitcoins. No, uh, but they are missing to calculate the potential price in the future. You know, they, they are thinking, okay, Today, 15 Bitcoins or somewhere around that are $1 million, okay? But I won't spend that million dollars today, not tomorrow, not in one year, not in two. And in two years, maybe we get to a bear market, maybe not, who knows? But in four years, even the worst predictions are telling us, even the power law is telling us we're going to be somewhere around, I don't know, 500K. So. Even if we don't reach that high numbers in this cycle, I need to put like the the lower range of the power law or, or the maybe even the stock to flow. And math tells us and scarcity tells us that it can't go wrong, you know, unless something really, really, really bad happens in the world. And in that case, Bitcoin won't matter, uh, money won't matter. We only thing that matter will be food and water, you know? So, uh, I mean, I prepare for every scenario. 
uh, I'm prepared for being wrong. I don't know if I'm wrong. I think I'm not. And I know if I am wrong, most of the smartest people in the world are wrong too. So that gives me quite a bit of comfort and, and you know, confidence that I'm heading in the right direction. Um, but in case everything goes wrong, I mean, I could easily go back to work. You know, retirement is not like a eternal thing. I wish it was, and I'm trying it to be. But uh, if I don't make it, uh, it's it was just like a good life lesson, you know? Absolutely, and you, you learn something with that. I'm really cool if someone now uh, sits at home and is like, okay, may maybe... I also could retire or if I want to work towards retirement at like whatever age, like 35, 45, 50, whatever. Um, I noticed that most of my subscribers are around like 45 to 50. Uh, so for them, it's like, okay, what if I can retire in like 10 years when I'm 55 or 60 um, or if, 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 uh, even if 65, maybe retiring ring better than the average person with Bitcoin. How do you look at like, that like what 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 do you what did you do in the calculations what models did you use what what you, you also said you prepared for what if i'm wrong how do did you prepare for that like what are your like worst case scenarios what are your like thinking of like how do you approach it what do i put in like an excel sheet and how do i even think about that <laughs> i mean the first thing i if i mean it's not advice but I would tell anyone who's trying to escape the rat race with Bitcoin is you need to be with an asset that is as volatile as Bitcoin is right now, which in my opinion is a very good thing. I embrace volatility and I want volatility because if you don't have, you know, like volatility to the downside, you won't have it to the upside either. So if we want to go to the moon, we have to be prepared to not, you know, like going sideways and having bear markets, which I think it's totally acceptable with this kind of, you know, asset. Um, but the main thing that led me to the idea of retiring is I can adapt. I'm easily adaptable with my current situation. You know, I till last year, I lived in a much smaller house with just one bedroom and I lived in the in the middle of the city and uh, I mean sorry I need to sorry I lived in the middle of the city and I was okay with that you know uh, I didn't have a problem with not going on holidays I didn't have a problem with not having a new car every year. I mean, I could afford it, but I knew that if I wanted to be free in the future, I needed to make a sacrifice in the present. That's what in the Bitcoin standard, it's called, you know, like low time preference. So if you can switch from low time preference to high time preference, according to the Bitcoin price of the moment, you can retire even if Bitcoin is at 60K, 100K or half a million, you know, because, for example, I'm setting on my spreadsheets, you know, like numbers when I where I put, for example, uh, if Bitcoin is at this price at this time of next year, I will be able to spend this amount of money. OK, but there's a minimum amount where I'm comfortable with spending that if I go below that, I won't be comfortable, you know, like, uh, I don't want to stop being able to pay my private medical insurance. I don't want to have to sell my car. I don't want to go back and live in the city in a small apartment, you know? So there's a minimum standard that I want to be or there or above that, you know, right now where the price is right now, it will let me live forever and a 3% withdrawal rate the standard of living I'm living today. Everything that comes after that, it's a bonus. You know, I think in like a, like a bonus, if I can 
sell my car and buy a new one, a luxury car. It's okay, I don't care about cars as long as it turns on and takes me to place B from spot A, it's okay for me. So if you aren't able to adapt to those price fluctuations, it will be very hard at least for the next four to six years to retire. Um, but even though if you decide to do it, you know there's a base price where you know anything above that, it will be okay for you. So I'm not planning my retirement like the Trinity study where, okay, I need to this amount of dollars per month. And after that, I'm going to spend that exact amount per month uh, plus inflation. I mean, that made sense in the past. I think that if you're trying to retire uh, with Bitcoin, you could think that way, but you will have to wait much longer. You know, if I want 100% certainty, I couldn't be able to retire right now. But I'm okay with uncertainty. I'm okay with spending a bit more next year and being a bit more frugal than year after that, you know? So as long as I have that base price, that for me is X amount, I'm okay. That is possible for me because of course I don't have children. Uh, my partner, she works uh, and I mean, she has no problem with me, you know, like taking these risks. I understand that some people uh, can't afford to take this, I wouldn't call it risk, this adventure, because maybe they are paying a mortgage, maybe they are in debt. Uh, the first thing I did when, when I started this plan was I need to be with no debt. I need to have no mortgage. In fact, I sold my house for Bitcoin in 2020. So I rent now and I don't care. I'm fine not having a house. And in fact, it was, if I think it on um, today, it was one of the best decisions I've ever made. Uh, I was scared. Maybe yes. Uh, I was advised by everyone not to do it. Sure, yeah. I did it anyways. Hell yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I think uh, financially, it's actually right now an amazing decision uh, to not have a home, but rent a home and instead put that money into Bitcoin. I think in five, 10 years, you will be looking back at that decision like, oh, that, that was one of the best financial decisions I'd take. Obviously, that uh, I could be wrong here, but that's my personal opinion. I could also go ahead now, uh, I'm 26, I could also go like, oh, let's build a house, let's build so some some roofs. But first of all, that's not my lifestyle <laughs> because I don't know if I want to end up in uh, being the whole life in Austria. Austria is beautiful, but maybe I want to move around. But second of all, I think a house would be a financially devastating decision right now. So uh, I like that you took that route. Also, you told me that you had or have a business uh, where you only accepted uh, Bitcoin. First of all, like what what kind of a business and what did you do there? Was it the guitars that you built? Uh, I think it was since last year or the year. Yeah, last year. Uh, all 2023, uh, knowing that I was very close from, you know, retiring from that job. Uh, I always had a very cliche phrase that I liked a lot, that it's be the change you want to see in the world. And I see all the time on the internet, even at Bitcoin conferences, where people talk about Bitcoin and Bitcoin and Bitcoin, and when they, when the time comes to pay, they only accept fiat money. So, I mean, don't don't get people for what they say. Get them for what they do. Okay, what people do is the truth. What people say can be a lie or the truth. So, I wanted to set an example. I wanted to make an unprecedented move because here in Argentina, uh, I mean, I think 
almost no business. Yeah, I mean, I'm almost sure zero business is here except Bitcoin as payment method. So I started in 2022 accepting Bitcoin and making a big discount by paying with Bitcoin. I didn't care about the difference because I, I knew I was going to make it much better in a, in a few months or at most in a year. And uh, last year I said, okay, I need to be the change that I want to see in the world. I need to set an example. I need to, you know, put my actions where my words are. So I started accepting only Bitcoin and, you know, like after I made that public, uh, lots of people came after me like, hey, I only got fiat or I can wire you or I can send you a check or I can send you USDT or whatever. And I was like, no, only Bitcoin. If not, I won't sell it for you and I won't build that custom guitar for you. Of course, I, I was in a financial position where I could afford to do that. I mean, if I had to do that four years uh, before that, uh, I couldn't have, you know, like that, uh, you know, possibility. Um, but given it, it, it was going to be my last year in, in that business, at least for now, I don't know in the future, but at least for now, I've been retired for half a year and I said, okay, I don't know, screw it. If nobody buys from me anymore, I'm okay with that. And it's a good way to see how real adoption is going mainly in a country like Argentina that just changed from a, like a very uh, left-wing uh, socialist government, which is another topic to discuss about. Uh, to a very libertarian uh, government. And lucky for me, uh, I got enough orders to fill the full year. Uh, it wasn't easy at first, but I knew it wasn't going to be easy. So uh, yeah, I ended up like keeping my word and, and taking orders only at Bitcoin, knowing it's it going to be like my you know, big goodbye. So at least I could do something for the network, you know. If you watch or listen to my podcast on a regular basis, I guess you already bought some Bitcoin. And now the most important step is to keep the Bitcoin. Keep them secure in a hardware wallet. My personal recommendation for hardware wallet is the Bitbox. It's super secure. It's simple to set up. It's also a perfect gift for a friend who has still the Bitcoin on an exchange. And you can get a 5% discount with the code Robin at the checkout. Visit Bitbox dot swiss slash robin to get your bitbox and the next step is to really level up your sovereignty as an individual you have to have the most secure self-custody setup you have to secure your own devices you have to protect your privacy you have to set up an inheritance plan and depending on where you live you even want to have a plan b a citizenship where you can move in case something goes really really wrong and through all those steps the Bitcoin Way is guiding you through step by step. And if you visit the bitcoinway.com slash partners slash Robin, you even get a 30 minute free call to find out how you can level up your sovereignty. And last but not least, I have something completely new for you guys. I partnered up with Coin Vigilante. This is the most beautiful Bitcoin timepiece that I ever saw created by anyone. Look at that beauty. I love it so much. Coin Vigilante made an perfect bitcoin watch that's the perfect subtle elegant way to go out there and show that you are a bitcoiner and that watch brand is bitcoin only and coin vigilante just dropped a completely new and amazing genesis edition of their watch collections you have the date of the first ever mined bitcoin block in there and of course also the block height and which epoch we are currently in i love the level of detail they put in in this masterpiece and make sure to check out those amazing coin vigilante timepieces down in the descriptions i love those watches so so much
That, that's amazing. I, I think uh, sending the signal that I'm only accepting Bitcoin, uh, most won't do it and most cannot afford it to do it also. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's really, for example, for me, it's just not possible because one of the paychecks that I get is from YouTube. I, <laughs> I cannot convince them to pay me in Bitcoin. Uh, I can convince them to not pay. Not, not yet, not yet. I, ho I hope I can do it. But my sponsors pay me. Uh, not all of them, but but some of them pay me in Bitcoin. Maybe uh, soon all of them. Uh, so like, the, it's it's slowly slowly converting. Just uh, um, five months ago, not one single sponsor paid me in Bitcoin. Now uh, the majority of the sponsors' money is in Bitcoin. Uh, and uh, maybe I can even switch to uh, within the next few months to all the money that I actually get from the sponsors is completely only in Bitcoin. I think that would be a, a, a great step also also for me and the business. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it would make perfect sense, you know, given like most of your sponsors are, you know, Bitcoin related products, maybe a hardware wallet or maybe an exchange or, I mean, if we don't set the example, we can't pretend the world to follow us, you know? So, uh, as I said before, it's easy to speak and to say fancy words and saying, yeah, Bitcoin is going to the moon. But for that to happen, we need actions. And actions are the one thing that lead to another action. So, I mean, now you're having, you know, part of your paycheck in fiat and part of your paycheck in Bitcoin and you're probably spending your fiat and not your Bitcoin and holding till the end. So it's like a, the problem is when you are alone doing something, you know, for example, I was the only uh, business here in Argentina, I think, or as far as I know, accepting only Bitcoin. And maybe that's strange and that's weird. And maybe that's why people didn't hold Bitcoin in the wallets. Um, but as long as enough people do it, other people will have to follow through no matter what they like, you know? So I think someone has to start the revolution. It already started, but I think we are halfway there. And the only way to get to the next level where we start uh, changing from you know, like store of value to medium of exchange to finally end up, you know, like in unit, unit of account is uh, by doing these small actions, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. And it's possible uh, to, to, to live on a, on a Bitcoin standard and to set that example as much as possible. Maybe, um, maybe for someone then it has to be like there's so much accountable things to to do um it's a big burden maybe they can move as slow as but as as much as we can we, we should move to uh th that um i also want to talk about argentina and 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 what you hear about that uh, versus what what's maybe going on uh, what we hear online but first one more question on the retirement thing um how long have you been now uh, retired and what did you notice of change uh, in, in you and your behavior and uh, in, in your interaction with, with the world? Well, that's, I think, ironically, one of my favorite questions to be asked. Uh, and it has to do with Bitcoin because uh, Bitcoin starts the change and the one that ends up changing is yourself. Uh, I've been retired for six months right now. Uh, I started having so much free time for myself that I even get pretty bored sometimes. Uh, luckily for me, with this whole lifestyle change of retiring, I moved from the city to the middle of the mountains and the lakes. So. I'm having much more contact with nature. I'm eating healthier. Uh, I'm trying to finally move to a carnivore diet, which I, which I can't yet because the second day I, I'm off carbs, you know, like I start like trembling and shaking and cold sweating. I think my body is so used to, 
you know, like not knowing anything about nutrition, uh, even though I tried to eat healthy all my life and, and you know, like uh, train and do sports, uh, I never try, you know, like full carnivore. And it's quite tough, man, at least for me. Um, I started uh, meditating. I started taking care of all my back pain and neck pain that I accumulated over the years because of my work. Uh, I started doing, uh, you know, like cold showers, ice baths, all those things that make you more uh, strong, resilient. I mean, strong, not in a physical way, but strong in a mental way. Uh, I'm much more resilient. I'm, I stopped having panic attacks. I stopped having anxiety. Uh, I mean, everything just changed for good for me. Um, I'm still a bit afraid of the amount of free time I have, which I shouldn't be really because we are used to and we are educated to be all the time being productive, which in some sense, I think it's okay to be productive. We need to give something back to the world. We need to have our time in our lives when we, you know, like create and leave our legacy. But I think that being productive, it's so, so, you know, like misunderstood that people will work all their lives just to be able to afford their medical care when they are retired, when they are old with the money they saved when they were working hard. So it's like a complete irony that I never understood really. And I, I'm not afraid of being bored. I'm not afraid of not knowing what to do. I'm not afraid of even someday oversleeping or not sleeping at all. And I'm not afraid of, you know, like staying till 3 a.m. reading a book or studying or playing guitar because the next day I don't have to go to work. So my life changed from being what I have to do to what I want to do. And that was for me the most important thing to achieve in life. That's beautiful. I love it a lot. Uh, I think it's a, it's a great, uh, great experience, man. I, I mean, I, I love also the, uh, mindset that you have that uh, you are aware that that might even fail and that you're okay with that. I think that's something that you really have to do because if you are not okay with that maybe failing, then you cannot really uh, have that experience. I feel like then you are just like really afraid. Oh shit! Like what what happens when Bitcoin is something? not not true or like th then you live in fear it, it feels like just accepting that uh, it, uh that you have a plan or you have something that that you you believe in yourself that you still figure it out even if uh, if you are at the thing i think that gives you a good thing or, or, or is it wrong yeah i mean i have a uh, my theory that you only have there only ex two assets that exists in the world for each of us. One is our time and the other one is our head, ourselves, you know, like who we are. That's my asset. Bitcoin is a way to measure those assets. Bitcoin is not the asset. Bitcoin is the standard, is the ruler that is not flexible, it's not elastic, it's not, you know, like fiat money. That's why we can't measure nothing in fiat money because it's a ruler that keeps changing its distances all the time. So once you understand the only two assets in the world are your time and who you are, you won't lose those assets, but you can keep the energy of those two assets in Bitcoin, you know? So I'm not afraid of being wrong and I'm not afraid of let's say failing because it's not failing. If you're trying and you have an idea and a plan and you execute it, it's not failing. Failing is not trying. So if I did try and I at least got 
let's say one, two years of free time of being retired, five years, and then I have to go back to work. Would you call that a fail or would you call that a, man, he got five free years to enjoy whatever he wants to do in the middle of his life when he's in his, you know, like physical and mental peak. And if I do have to go back to work, I know I'm going to do just as well as I did before because the thing that didn't change when I retire is who I am and what made me succeed and what I was doing is who I am, not what I was doing. It took me a while to figure that out. I mean, it's like a much more philosophical, you know, like uh, approach, but I ended up, you know, getting to that conclusion. That's why I'm not afraid. I love that. Uh, it, 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 it's really, it, it's not, has almost nothing to do with Bitcoin, but it has everything to do with Bitcoin. <laughs> I feel like. Yeah, because it's where you measure that energy and who you are, you know? I, plus, I mean, we need to, plus we need to be very, very, very thankful to the universe or to whatever God you believe in, because 99.9999% of the people who ever lived in this world and the people who will live in this world will not be able to do what we are able to do now. So we are a very, very, very fortunate micro space in time where we can understand Bitcoin, be in the age where you can work to earn dollars to buy Bitcoin. I mean, people who today are 70, 80, 90 or dead, they didn't know Bitcoin because it wasn't discovered when they were alive. People that are not born today won't be able to buy Bitcoin with fiat money. So we are in this very, very, very small window. And I think it's morally and ethically wrong not to take advantage of that, you know? Absolutely true. Um, maybe a hard topic uh, change now, but let's talk about Argentina. So you live in Argentina. Um, Javier Millet, I think, tries to do amazing work to make a free competition at, between currencies possible. How did you see Argentina uh, developing in the past few uh, years? Uh, and you also told me that Sometimes you think that the representation what you see online on Twitter is not really the 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 what would you actually see in Argentina? How how is that coming? Yeah, about Twitter and some tweets we all read. I know you read, I read, and every Bitcoiner reads every day because that's what we do. <laughs> uh, I think they are not completely true, and when I know for sure that something it's not true. I'm afraid that everything else is as a lie as the one I know it's a lie, you know? For example, I, I read on the main, you know, like Bitcoin Twitter accounts like, hey, Javier Millet is talking about, you know, making Bitcoin legal tender. Uh, it's going to be Argentina, the next El Salvador. It's going to be Argentina, the next country, I don't know, mining Bitcoin. And the real truth, as harsh as it may sound, it's, I live here, I read the news every day, I watch the amount of TV that it's hell, you know, healthy for, for your mind. But uh, I mean, nobody here is talking about Bitcoin as they are, you know, like in the States or in Europe or, you know, like some other countries. I know people that buy Bitcoin. I know fewer people that understands Bitcoin and I know nobody, I mean, nobody who lives or thinks in a Bitcoin standard, you know, like whenever I talk to anyone about Bitcoin or when I try to orange peel a friend or, you know, like uh, whoever I, I start talking about this because I, I get very passionate about it, which I don't know if it's good or bad, you know, for the one listening, but it's what I am. Um, they always are thinking about just the price and the, you know, like price movements and uh, 
the, the their first question is always like, "Hey, how are you doing with your Bitcoin? I, I heard it it went up, you know." Which, I mean, I have to be realistic, and I know that it's very important because, you know, like it's the measure against our current unit of account. But they don't see Bitcoin as you know like the the new standard that a new paradigm shift. They don't see Bitcoin as, uh, you know, they, they they just talk about you know crypto. I don't I don't know if there's a word that I hate more than crypto. You know, like whenever somebody says crypto, I'm like, they drive myself crazy, and I have to start the conversation about why Bitcoin and not crypto. Um, but they are always thinking of it like a number go up asset, which it is. But it's not only that, you know, it's your tool to reach your freedom. It's the only way where you can, you know, like keep your hard earned time and energy in somewhere nobody can mess up with, you know, mainly in Argentina where we lived in the last 30 or 40 years, two hyperinflations, we live through confiscation of assets, we live through, you know, like, uh, Lots and lots and lots of economical crisis where our money, our currency is completely dead. You know, like right now it's stabilizing a bit more. But what I and what you and I think uh, for Bitcoin against the dollar, they think about the dollar against the peso. You know, most Argentina Argentinians, their Bitcoin is the dollar because. You know, like when I got some dollars, the first thing I do is exchange them for sats. When people here earn pesos uh, as their, you know, like income, the first thing they do in order not to get, you know, like liquidated is like they go and buy dollars. So we still have that mentality from 50 years ago where the dollar is a stable thing that doesn't lo lose value over time that it has a reason to exist because it comes from our parents and our grandparents where they have a very conservative way of, you know, like investing where they were like, okay, go buy dollars and whenever you have enough money, go and buy a house. Or as we call it here, bricks. Bricks is like anything related to a building or a construction or an office, a house, an apartment. So... Argentinian mindset is still completely and directly uh, related to dollars and bricks, dollars and bricks. So I think the newer generations are st starting to awake just a little bit, you know, we are not quite still there, but I think there's no chance at all that, you know, like the 50-year-old generation, you know, like the ones that today are in power and in the Senate and congressmen and all our politics, um, I don't think they understood it enough to, uh, to make the change, unfortunately, because I read all the streets about can be Argentina the next, can be Argentina adopt the Bitcoin. And whenever I read that, as I told you before, it scares me that every other tweet I read about, you know, like, uh, let's say, Gary Gensler saying this, or Cynthia Loomis about to do that, or, uh, I don't know, the European bank, it's about to unban or, you know, like, adopt uh, Bitcoin-friendly regulations. I really uh, start doubting everything, you know, because if everything I read about the things I know, it's not true. How can I know if the things I don't know about are true, you know? That's my main, main fear. Yeah, I mean, I think there's always a, a level of, um, you have some underlying truth to it, and then the internet is blowing that small thing up like crazy. Uh, so this, this is a thing that it's, it's a, it's a, it, I don't know if it's a huge problem, but it's definitely reality. Like it's, if, if uh, there is a president like Xavier Malay saying like, 
oh yeah, I want to have free competition uh, uh, around all currencies, then people are like, oh, Argentina will be the next Bitcoin country. That's an extreme like that. That that it's just not true. Um, and if there's like maybe in the EU there's some small regulation coming uh, where they are like saying, oh, we we don't like uh, self custody or it has to be now KYC. Then it's like EU is banning Bitcoin. Like <laughs> no, it's not. So like uh, there's this media thing where it's it's blowing things up, uh, but that's probably just the um that's just because people really want to have those big headlines and they want to click on those big headlines um uh, and there's always some truths to it and there's always some lies or some uh exaggeration some 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 blowing up to that uh and i think like i mean it's true that our president right now is uh trying to force like uh, currency competition, free currency competition, uh, which I think it's great because uh, if people in Europe and in the States are thinking their money is worthless, I invite them to join us for one or two months to really know what to be uh, worthless is. Uh, but the good thing about that is that uh, every little change that's you know for better for us right now that we're in the bottom of the sea it's like like a v-shaped correction that's you know like if we talk about the macroeconomics of the country but the good thing about bitcoin is i don't know if i can swear in your channel but i don't give a you know uh I'm free. I don't. My economy doesn't depend anymore on on my country, on my you know like uh, politics uh, decisions uh, on nothing. You know, my economy only depends on how good I keep my seed words and my passphrase, and that's it. You know. So when I was saying before being free, I really meant free. You know, like I'm living in Argentina right now because I want to, not because I don't have another option. I can go and live on any other country and I could afford, uh, you know, like uh, a passport, a citizenship or, you know, but I choose to live here because of all the good things that we have, that we do have them, even though bad news are always, you know, like uh, they go uh, far and good news. They are usually, you know, uh, not that uh, known about, but right now I'm living, as I told you in the middle of, you know, the mountains and the lakes and uh, with snow and with the, uh, you know, in the woods where I can go and take uh, long walks alone and be in nature. And apart from that, the cost of living here is so much cheaper that in Europe and then in the States. I mean, I don't know if I could uh, retire if I live in Europe right now, for example, but everyone has to make their numbers according to the life they choose, right? So uh, the life I chose is being here, which I love, where, is, uh, where my family is, where my friends are, where uh, my girlfriend is, where you know my whole life is. I'm not scared of moving if I have to. And one thing that lets me sleep at night, it's that uh, if I have to, I can take my my 24 words with me. So, I mean, that's real freedom, you know? So if they want to ban the dollars, fine by me. If they want to ban, ban Bitcoin, fine by me. They want to ban free currency exchange, fine by me. I don't care. I transcended all that, you know, uh, human stupidity. Not because I'm better or or I, I reach any kind of nirvana. It's just because I chose to keep my energy and my time and my assets in Bitcoin. That's the only thing and the only reason of why I, I just don't care. Mm, I love that a lot. 
And uh, that one hour that we already uh, are now, it, it really flew by. <laughs> I'm really cool. Uh, I liked it a lot. Um, you may might know my end routine. I have always two questions. Uh, the one question is always the same. Uh, the one question is what the same is. What can we learn from you um, besides Bitcoin? And I would add with you besides Bitcoin and all the things that we talked about, retirement and stuff like that, uh, what else uh, um, could we learn from you? Well, uh, that's a tough question. Um, I think what I've learned from me that maybe someone else can learn from me is being able to be in the permanent search of becoming a better person. Uh, even when life, you know, throws stones at you, even when your body hurts, even when things go to trash, you can still, you know, be that change you want to see in the world, as I said before, and you can, you know, uh, put your actions where your mouth is, because as I, as I already said, it's easy to say something. It's not that easy to do that something. So I think, uh, yeah, that constant try to be a, a better person and, and, and trying to live according to what I say. Yeah, th that's really cool. I think that's a great learning. Perfect. Then let's come to the end routine. Uh, let's see what the previous guest, like the end routine of the question, uh, the podcast is always what the previous guest is asking a question for the next guest without knowing who the next guest is. A very interesting one for you. Does fixing the money really fix the world? Yes, definitely. Yes. Fixing the money. It's not what we think it, it is. Fixing the money is not fixing the dollar bills or the euro bills or how we transact with each other fixing the money is putting a hard cap on how people in power can steal from us and being owners of our true owners of our time and energy so what to do with that time and energy it's up to you but it's but no one no one and no one ever will be, you know, like uh, able to take that away from you if we fix the money. So, yeah, I think fixing the money will not end death, will not end poverty, will not end, uh, you know, income inequality. Because those things will exist even on a you know, hard money Bitcoin standard because it's a full meritocracy. But um, yeah, but I think if we fix the money, we will solve 99% of the problems of the world right now. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's sometimes I feel like we can take it too far because money is not everything, but it's massively changing a lot of those things like it, it really um, is a fundamental of things but we still are humans like humans will still be have the humans problems as 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 humans will have uh but yeah it's uh i i do think also that it, it's fixing a lot of of the things perfect then yeah thank you so much uh francisco for for being on my show um, before I let you go, where can people find you, ask you questions and uh, find more about you? Well, you can uh, go find me uh, on Twitter with my account uh, that you can share with you. It's quite long, but you can share then in the video. And you can find me on Instagram too with, uh, again, the link I'll uh, provide you. Uh, but not that much because as, as I told you, I try to keep the lowest profile I can. I think part of, of this journey is trying to turn into nobody. So <laughs> really cool. Absolutely. 
Uh, then thank you so much, Francisco, for, for being on the show. Also, thank you so much for everyone that is watching and listening uh, for joining us today. As always, I'll be back tomorrow with another episode. Bye-bye.